We got a call from a mysterious man. said, meet us at the Porta Blanco Marina in 25 minutes. I think he has a package for us. Lola, I'm recording. Just so you know, I can't see the camera at all. All right, tell us about this week. We went on an epic motorcycle adventure through the hills of Luperon. It was adventure day with Cliff and Craig. Keep your revs up when you're really low torque. Okay. Keep it up eventually. Stop if you try to hit it. Oh, that's a We saw some crazy cool places. We went through all the tiny pueblos that dot the mountainsides around Luperon. We rode the bikes through a river. Uh, we swam in the we swam in the river <laughs> at this place called Agua Verde, which might have been the name of the bar or the town or the swimming hole, we're not sure, but it was it was an incredible spot. So that was Sunday, just really exploring the greater area of Lupron, getting to know more of the Dominican Republic, and definitely falling more in love with this place. One thing that occurred to us was we realized that we've gone through great difficulty to live the lifestyle of what appears to be poverty. Yeah, if you consider poverty to be washing your clothes in a bucket, eating beans and rice, and uh, self-sustainability, self-sufficiency, that was definitely what we found in these towns and it's been our goal all along, you know, to kind of not live off the land in the way these people are, but to turn the boat into a homestead, you know, sailing the farm style was really the whole inspiration behind this journey. We replaced two of our lower shrouds. So we ordered the stays from rigging only and they got here within a couple weeks. And amazingly, we are so worried about the measurements and if we've given the right size for the pins and everything, but it seems to work. It was actually like surprisingly one of the easier jobs that we've done on the boat so far. So hopefully, you know, we didn't screw anything up. Shout out to Ragnarok, CJ and Eric. They were the ones that recommended that we go through riggingonly.com and riggingonly.com was amazing to work with. They responded to the email within less than five minutes and every time I have a question they would get right back to you and they were very much ready to make this thing happen and you know we, we received what appears to be a high quality product. 31, 32. Is that really what they were at? Yeah. Weird. 26, 36. And our back stay was at 21.
So now we've got every one of these right around 31 and the back stays at 30. Our uh, side stays were a little bit thicker than quarter inch, which, which was the biggest um, diameter that our, our, um, tuner. our tuner would fit. That, you know, we borrowed the tuner from a cruiser that's you know, kind of cheating, I guess, because he, he spent like $100 on the tuner, which is awesome, very handy. And, you know, we just needed to use it real quick, and so. We could have bought a tuner. We found one at Freddy's, our favorite marine repuesto here in Luperon. And he wanted 50 bucks for it, and now knowing that Steve got the same exact thing for 100 bucks makes it seem pretty reasonable and we would probably pick it up at this point if it had the possibility to fit all of our rigging. So we still don't know for sure what our side stays, the main ones are tuned to because the one at Freddy's wouldn't fit and Steve's wouldn't fit. Um, so I guess if we come across a tuner that would fit all of our rigging, we'll pick it up. But, but our side stays actually look really good and they're, they feel equally, it's pretty easy just to kind of pull on it and they feel equal and they feel, you know, like there's good tension on both of them. So another, another um, sign that they're good was when I got the halyard and I went to um, our stanchion on port side and then stanchion on the starboard side and um, it, you know, it was exactly the same distance down on each stanchion. So that let me know that the mass was, you know, straight up and down. And what do you think about the whole Christmas um, baskets experience that we went on, I guess, the experience that we had? Yeah, um, it took me a while to kind of figure out what I was thinking. This Hello. is my friend Jose, he's a city Hello. councilman here in Luperon. And he's, uh, he's the brains behind this operation? Every year he gives out hundreds of gift baskets. Okay. To the Good. needier families in the world. Awesome. All right. Big project. He's a good man. He's Santa. Santa. <laughs> That's Santa of yeah. Luperon. Yes. Hola. Entendí, venga. Sí. Pollo. What I felt initially was really awkward um, and maybe that's like, you know, kind of my own cultural, I don't know, confines coming into play. It was, it was uncomfortable to kind of just jump in at the last stage of this whole um, Christmas basket process. You know, we weren't involved with making up these baskets. We didn't put in any of the work that went into getting these together. We just kind of showed up to observe the wrapping and to film them being delivered. And um, yeah, for some reason that made me feel really uncomfortable. Like, like we were almost, I mean, with Jose and his family who was handing out these baskets, I felt like I, we were we were in a position that was somehow higher um, or, or better, I guess, than the people who were receiving the baskets. And it wasn't, I think this was just me, it wasn't like the people that were getting the baskets seemed embarrassed or you know, they, they were really excited and, and there's big smiles, you know, everybody was taking pictures with Jose and whoever was getting the basket, they seemed genuinely happy. And I know this was such a genuine um, effort for Jose to contribute to his community, his his neighbors um, in such a way. It was, it was really a cool deal. <laughs> Looks like nobody's home. Cliff was saying Jose bought the cinder blocks for this house and then she didn't vote for him. So we're sitting down to lunch and just kind of talking about, I guess, the spirit of giving and motivation in general, trying to figure out why exactly it was that, um, you know, Cliff wanted us to film this. Like, was there, 
special benefit for him that he was looking for? Was it for our benefit to have the experience? Um, the kind of things that Jose is motivated by, you know, improving his his community, but also his political ambitions within the community. So his reputation is is directly tied to that. Um, and I kind of brought up the idea that I'd found um, through studying economics in university the idea that capitalism is you know, maybe not a perfect system, but from a certain perspective, it has the benefit of improving the common good through um, through, through motivated self-interest. You know, a person does something because they want to improve the livelihood for themselves, and that has the happy effect of benefiting the community. Um, so I'm curious, Joel, do you believe that self-interest is actually beneficial to the greater common good? Self-interest can be positive as well as it can be negative. I don't believe that it is possible to escape all self-interest. I think that's um, a delusion. As far as I can see, even if you want absolutely nothing in return for what you do, I would think that how does it make you feel? It just makes me question, I guess, my own self-interest. What do you think, I guess, about uh, about Christmas in general as a holiday? On the religious front or the, the materialistic front? Just Christmas. Christmas in general. Is Christmas good or bad? Well... <laughs> I loved Christmas growing up. I always had really happy feelings, excitement, you know, like a couple nights as a kid, I might not even sleep over Christmas Eve because I was so excited, you know, stockings were gonna be filled magically with with awesome gifts that, you know, there, there was like a lot of love associated with that. I was I was on the receiving end of, of presents and, and all this family compassion. It was a really happy time. And uh, I guess later, growing up, kind of became really cynical um, into the college years about the twisted nature of a materialistic culture kind of taking over this, this sense of love and, and competition through, you know, who can give the best gift or, or if your tree and decorations are better than your neighbors. You know, it just kind of poisoned I guess the whole idea of Christmas for me. Another point that this brought up was we were talking about is there a point in helping somebody you know just a little bit you know you're not really actually changing the situation of a person maybe you give them a pair of socks their life isn't necessarily changed anyway so. To me I almost wondered if it wasn't the food being the biggest gift or just the whole acknowledgement um, of Jose kind of taking it upon himself to to acknowledge these people in his community to be like hi you know I see you I love you Merry Christmas here's a chicken from me to you um, you know he mentioned that it grows every year whether by donations or his own effort he's trying to give out chickens to everybody it seems like you know whether they absolutely need one chicken one meal or not like Joel mentioned it, it probably wouldn't change the course of their entire lives or maybe it will you know well and that's that's where you know I've definitely changed my thinking that from the very beginning of this journey which is accepting I guess the dualistic nature of our reality and now being okay with not trying to completely obliterate dark I guess you can say but realizing the interdependence of white and black or good and evil and knowing that in order to be good or to feel good you have to have the bad or the evil and so I guess now the approach is you accept that and you don't try to completely eliminate, say, world hunger. But it doesn't mean that you don't do what you can to provide food for somebody who needs food. You know, you might say, well, 
there's still people starving all over the place. So what have you really done? You know, you, you gave one person food for a day or for even a meal. Like, what does that really do? But it seems to me that it's worth it. 600 baskets. 600 baskets. Not enough for everybody. Not enough for everybody. How do you, how do you decide? Well, I know the situation of the people. I'm from here and I know how people live here. I know people that really need it. Do you personally know everybody here that you yes you do? Okay. I know everybody. This is my town here in Lucanon. Okay. So what do you remember what it started with? How many baskets maybe the first year? Well the first year I gave a uh, two hundred basket. I'm doing this for twelve years. Okay. And every year it's a little bit more and more and more and more. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well thank you for letting us come along. And Thank you. Experience it. Very good. Without the villain, there's no hero. If there's no hero, there's no villain. Are you going to watch that movie? Are you going to read that book? Is life going to be worth living? I don't know. These are the tales of Boab.